What's this all about, Copper Day? Well, it's about multiple things, really. We're celebrating our ESRC Copper Project. And secondly, the 200th anniversary of the Havard Copper Works. Uh, it's exactly 200 years ago that the first ingot rolled out. We're also celebrating something we're going to hear a little bit more about, or a lot more about in the moment, the 50th anniversary of the Lower Swansea Valley Project. That was the most extraordinary achievement here in Swansea, a partnership between the university, the council, the Welsh office and private enterprise, which transformed the largest uh, post-industrial landscape in Europe. People came from all over the world to look at what they called the Swansea experiment and they went away with the lessons that they learned here. We're also celebrating uh, a new venture and the new venture is the Havard Copperworks Development Project. I'm very pleased to say the University uh, and the City and County of Swansea signed a memorandum of understanding uh, to undertake a feasibility study to have a look at what could be done uh, with the Havard Copperworks site. Copperopolis, when Swansea and Neath ruled the world, and they did, when the copper entrepreneurs created the first globally integrated heavy industry. Let me explain very briefly. There is no copper ore in Swansea. You've got to get it from somewhere else. First of all, they got it from Cornwall. Then they got it from Anglesey. And when those supplies were depleted, they went elsewhere. And where did they go? They went to Cuba, they went to Chile, they went to South America, North America, Northern Spain, Sweden, etc., etc. All that ore came up the Swansea Valley and then it was smelted and then it was sent out again to places that I'm interested in. The Asia Pacific region, Africa, the Atlantic economy. The interesting thing about um, the development of the copper industry in Swansea is that it's a very sort of um, early example of industrialisation and the people involved in um, copper manufacture were really pioneers. They had to develop not just their industrial sites but also the whole infrastructure. Um, so I think one of the reasons I'm very interested in the development of the copper industry in Swansea is because it's the idea of these pioneering industrialists having to tackle so many different problems, really. The Vivians um, were a Cornish family. I mean, lots of people who got involved in copper smelting in Cornwall had their origins in the ore mining regions mm. in Cornwall. Um, but there were new demands for copper by that stage. Um, the Navy had become an important customer. Copper was being used to sheathe the hulls of Navy ships to protect them against um, deterioration from doing long voyages and that was a very important sort of new market creating a new demand for Swansea smelted copper. So people like the Vivians saw an opportunity there I think to take advantage of that. They were very far-sighted in wanting to develop uh, the port of Swansea, the new docks. They were far-sighted in bringing the railway to Swansea, 1850. So they're far-sighted people and people recognised that they were far-sighted and so Swansea benefited greatly. I suppose it uh, was until the end of the century Swansea would have been a um, more important town than Cardiff. Copperopolis also defined the built environment. Um, just one example that I came across, uh, a listing of what was in Swansea in 1883, okay? Five miles away from where we're speaking now, in 1883, you would have found the following. 36 collieries, 8 iron works, 6 tin works, 3 steel works, 6 zinc works, 12 copper works, and 16 other types of works within five miles of here. Now, in a way, the title Copperopolis is a complete misnomer. Swansea is much more than about copper, it's about all these other things uh, as well. This is the first stage in sh shaping a copper pan. What men are doing is using tongs, to, but they've got a big round um, copper sheet, and it will be turned into a version of a copper pan. Using their tongs and their skill, all done by eye, they will have made a perfect copper pan. In 1948, Landor was the only place in the world which produced copper pans using a single sheet of copper. 
So what do you think of a day like this, like the copper day? I think it's wonderful, especially when your family have been in it, you know. Yes, exactly. I was 14 when I started in the office here during the war. Yeah. You can just see the two towers, with, uh, two stacks which are still there. Uh, these other stacks have been removed. Uh, by the end of the year or early next year, the, um, they are open to put uh, a boat to run trips up the river, river Tawi from the uh, docks. Uh, we're hoping that the um, new boat will be able to go up uh, here up past Morriston. The amount of, of uh, pollution that now goes into the River Tawi, for example, then has an, an improving effect on the area lower downstream and out into Swansea Bay as well. So there was a physical improvement. The Lower Swansea Valley project came into being in 1961. What it did was clean up the landscape, um, which was the first priority, but no notice was taken of the many, many heritage assets of international significance that still remain. And the reason that I'm interested in all of this is we must do something now to protect all this stuff before it disappears. And we are seriously, with some of these buildings in Last Chance Saloon, future generations will look back at us askance if we all don't make an effort to preserve our collective pasts. It's critical. We need to connect these things together because they're scattered all over the place. And that's what this project is all about. It is the most intensively and diversified industrial site in Britain, bar none. But here we have 173 copper-related sites of international significance. Now that's not me talking, that's Stephen Hughes, who is the Chief Inspector for the Royal Commission on Ancient Historic Monuments of Wales. International significance. None of them have any signs on them, no interpretation. People look at it, they don't know what they are. We have to get that stuff recognised and we have to tell our story through it. And that's what we're doing. My calculation is that there were 124 of these chimney stacks in about 1860. Can't be accurate, it's around that number. We've got two left. I think these symbolise Swansea's past. That's why our project logo here has those as our symbolic emblem of what Swansea's all about. If we lose the, next, the last two, we've had it. Now our concentration is on the Havard site with our regeneration project. It has 12.75 acres, 14 listed structures, quite tightly organised uh, together. It's, for those of you who don't know it, it's this site here, more or less, the Liberty Stadium, the Morva Retail Park, the fantastic White Rock site. Um, what we're looking to do, with or without commercial partners, is do something that will bring a, a landmark statement to the world about the importance uh, of the Lower Swansea Valley. The flagship building, of course, is the en Vivian Engine Houses. And I'll just finish on that. I think that is Swansea encapsulated. Copper, in a sense, has been eliminated from our collective past. What we want to do uh, is put it back there so that we can take uh, the city forward. Today is not the end, it's a start of a very long and difficult journey. Uh, I hope some of you will come with us. Thank you very much.